I'm Charlotte and this is Tabo Tries to Read. This is take two because the dogs decided to have a giant play fight <laughs> right outside the shed and it was funny for a minute and I tried to sort of, you know, ad lib along and then it just got annoying and then Idris came along and started shouting at them. So I decided just to start again, cut my losses. Um, I was going to say, um, first of all, hello to some new subscribers. I don't know where you've come from because I've been massively out of the YouTube loop for about a week. I have watched maybe two videos because I've just not had any time to stop. So um, I'm going to catch up hopefully tonight. Um, so I feel like part of the community again. So if you've come from somewhere specific, let me know so I can say thank you. Um, otherwise, I'm going to crack on with a November, a non-fiction November TBR. Uh, yes, I said I wasn't going to do non-fiction November because it looks like the prompts for eight books, but in fact I've managed to squish them down to four, which I'm not sure if anybody else is doing, but I'm going to give it a whirl. So, they work in this very cool way. So this is the prompt number one. Past time, time of the past, slash pastime, as in um, a hobby. So I have squidged them together and I've chosen Lynette Roberts' Diaries, Letters and Recollections. So this is past time because it was written, um, the letters and stuff are from around the 40s. And it's past time because letter writing and diary keeping are past times, are they not? That is my, that's my word on it and I'm going to stick to it. So there's a great little excerpt um, from the back. So she was the um, uh, wife of Kedrick Rees, who was a quite a famous uh, Welsh writer. And she says on November 3rd, 1939, she says, um, today Kedrick frequently found cinders of grit in his stewed apples. I told him poets must always expect pieces of chimney in their dishes. That is their fate. He laughed and said that what he usually does is, you ought to be filmed. His ears are scarlet and I hate him. He is always chewing humbugs. Awesome. Um, and then the first bit in here, I think is quite a good one. Um, my sister's birthday and I've celebrated it by scrubbing the floor, cleaning the grate. Kedrick said that I have some funny ideas about poets, and I have. I think good real living is more important than spreading yourself on paper. Awesome. Yeah, she's great. I think she's going to be really good. I've been meaning to read it forever, so I'm going to get around to it now. Um, the second prompt is self and shelf. So I, it had to be something about books, I figured, with the word shelf. And the self bit, I mean, this is taking massive liberties with the prompt. Um, but this is a book by um, um, Gabriel or Gabrielle, might be, might be Gabrielle Zaid. He's a Mexican writer, I believe. Just double check that. Uh, mm -hmm. Mexico City, yeah. And what I love about this, um, Zaid lives in, lives in Mexico City with the artist Basia Batorska, her paintings, three cats and 10,000 books amazing so this is all about um the love of books and i've had this if you could hear that but there's like at least two helicopters circling my house so um that bodes well back when i lived in a council state that was just the that was just the norm but i live in the countryside now so that's quite odd um this was published in 2003 so I got this when I was a bookseller and I've had this for just forever. So this is why it's self to me. This is a book that is just representative of me as a book owner, that I can buy something that I find so beautiful and that I can be so excited about. And it wasn't cheap, you know, it was more or less a tenner for this tiny little book. And then I've not read it. It's just, I'm getting really frustrated with myself about how many books I've got on my shelf that have just lost their, their sparkle to me and I haven't read them. So that is why I've chosen that one. The third prompt is um, wonder, as in wandering, moving, traveling, and wonder, as in awe, and um, or or as in wonder, as in thinking, presumably. <laughs> I'm just checking. There's not a third spelling. Not the best speller. Um, I have chosen Olivia Lang's Lang Lang. I've heard too many people say Lang now. I think, I think I'm wrong and it is Lang because I was saying Lang for ages. I've chosen The Lonely City Adventures in the Art of Being Alone. I've had this for ages. I originally bought it for a friend and then felt it would be slightly insensitive as a gift. <laughs> so I decided to keep it. Um, this is about Olivia Lang moving to New York City in her mid-30s and finding herself inhabiting loneliness. So I kind of felt that, that you know, she moves to somewhere 
traveling wandering not sure um, and then the wonder is obviously thinking about things trying to figure things out that that is my feeling about how that fits that prompt it is a little bit vague but I've been saying um, I read uh, Crudo this year and absolutely loved it and I've been saying that I've got two of her non-fiction books which I haven't read and that's just something I'm really going to try and avoid from now on is having multiple copies of somebody's book and not actually reading it uh, so now the last one is micro macro so I don't need to explain that but I have chosen The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks which is a book I have wanted to read since it came out I obviously didn't buy it till I thought I thought I bought it in the original edition but either it went missing somewhere or I lent it because I then had to buy it when the when the film came out and um I thought that would apply because you've got the micro, you've got the life of one woman, and then you've got the macro, which is how she affected um, science and, and the millions of people that have benefited from the um, the knowledge about her DNA. So, yes, uh, if you didn't know, it's the story of um, Henrietta Lacks, who was born a poor tobacco farmer, and her cancer cells, which were taken without her knowledge, became a multi-million dollar industry and one of the most important tools in medicine. Yet Henrietta's family did not learn of her immortality until more than 20 years after her death. So it's a real sort of, um, it's an issue of morality. It's an issue of how we have just historically abused people of colour in just every way we can possibly think, including, you know, the theft of someone's cells and then the profiting upon that theft astronomically bad so um, I feel like it's an important read that I've missed along the way so that feel, feels to me ambitious enough and yet here we go with some more um, I'm not going to rival Doris with her non-fiction November book list because that that Doris was an impressive book list um, mine is much smaller but for me it's still quite large so after the horrendous events that have been occurring in the news recently and the awful um, shootings that have occurred um, I saw a great post um, uh, by, I, I don't know if you, what, you, if you don't subscribe to this channel, you totally need to. I'm going to put a link to her channel underneath. Um, but uh, Happy Occurrences. So she's awesome. She shares, she's a, a mother like me, so I feel like I can relate on that level. But she reads tons. Like, I don't know how she'd do it. I believe she's got two children. So that, there are so many planes up there right now. Can you hear that? I really hope this means I'm not going to have to ditch this whole video. <laughs> um, yes, so awesome stuff that she reviews. Some of it is really cute, like cosy crime and just really nice things like that. But then she goes bam into these social justice books and then she reads all the big books that you hear about on, on booktube. She just covers the lot, I feel. And um, I just love her style. She's got the softest voice ever. It just feels totally relaxing to listen to her videos. So she posted on instagram about how she felt that she should dig this book out and i was like oh my god i have that book too can we buddy read and just harassed basically until she agreed so <laughs> we're not going to do it at any massive pace and um, if you can't quite see this is hannah arendt's the origins of totalitarianism so this covers the um sort of uh, analysis of how um, the Nazis got to the point that they did, how the concentration camps came about, the persecution of Jewish right. people, just generally how we get to those points in history. And I kind of feel like it, the answer is going to be we are all responsible, which is which is the kind of message I want to hear. I want to hear why, how we're all responsible, because I think that's the only way we're going to get out of this is if we all, all learn to accept responsibility for the terrible things that are happening, that we're then possibly without our direct knowledge benefiting from. So this is an enormous book and we're deciding to just go at it a few pages a day, whatever we feel. So I'll keep you updated when I've read chunks and um, I don't, I'm not sure um, how, yeah, I'm not, we haven't really ironed it out completely, but we will. <laughs> um, that's that one. And I've got, um, Kate Atkinson at Behind the Scenes at the Museum. Now, what the reason I picked this up is because I wanted to put a couple more fiction books in my November reads because I know I'm probably not going to be able to read all of these non-fiction ones all in a go. And I was thinking, right, how am I going to get... My bookshelves are just rammed. I've talked about this a lot. I don't know what to do about it. I'm kind of at a loss as to how to fix the situation. I've just had a ton of books arrive today. 
like what am I doing I've got so much to read so I thought okay well what if I try and read all of the A's maybe and I've got quite a few Atkinson's and I said in another video that I was going to try and read some of the books that I've got multiple copies of that author's books and I've not even read one of them I've just weirdly collected them being convinced I will enjoy that author and then not actually read them um, so I've got behind the scenes at the museum I believe that's one of the earlier ones if I enjoy this then I'll go into her other ones if I don't I'll probably ditch the lot and then the last book I've chosen which is not going to be necessarily my November read but it's going to be a book I really want to finish before 2018 and that was you know everyone's like really excited to sort of get to the end of 2018 with their reads and I just feel really mortified about how many books I've got in my house how it feels overwhelming which one to choose um my TBR shelf is longer than it's ever been these this is the shelf I've dedicated to all the new books that have come in since I started booktube and I feel like because I haven't tackled that shelf I can't tackle any of my regular shelves that are just generally covered in books so I decided to just look at them this afternoon and pick a book that I wanted to finish before 2018 was finished and I picked um <laughs> I picked a, just a diddy, a diddy little book, um, The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. It's the 2013 book a winner. You've probably seen it before. It's huge. I have read Eleanor Catton's The Rehearsal, so they, I kind of feel justified to have it on my shelves. I was mixed feelings about The Rehearsal. I enjoyed it, but again, it kind of screamed I've had a creative writing class about it. I get a, a little bit frustrated with authors that play too many tricks on you, but it was really good. I actually can't remember a lot of what it was about apart from a music lesson and it being a little bit rude in places. That's all I can remember. But this is a book winner. So this is the monster that I want to tackle. And I just love this, this edition. It's actually really nicely done, isn't it? Look, beautiful illustrations. The town of Hokitika. I actually have no idea what it's about. I know that it follows the zodiac in its yeah there's 12 chapters so 12 signs of the zodiac some of them seem to be mapped out here yeah that is my aim how many pages is it ah 828 <laughs> seemed like an awesome idea when i picked it off the shelf earlier so that's my tbr and yes um I would love to know if you're doing Nonfiction November. I've been really enjoying keeping up um, with the Instagram ones. I can keep up with Instagram because it's just a picture. It's the YouTube videos I've not been able to watch. Um, but I would really like to know what you're reading because I'm happy to maybe squeeze a few extra in. <laughs> so if you've got any recommendations, please comment below. Or if you've read any of the books that I have suggested, please comment below. Okay, I'm going to go and find out why there are so many helicopters outside my house. Uh, I will speak to you soon. Bye.